coming up on the finale, my friends. Welcome back to Snow's Video Guides on Battleborn, because you were born for this. Today we're going to go over El Dragon, the wrestling championship mastermind behind all these great master moves. This guy is uh, an excellent melee. He's great at initiating fights. He's just amazing at initiating fights. And people are never expecting to see his powerful melee once they're in the thicket of it. Uh, so let's jump right into it. We're going to go over the skills, then the helix, then some gameplay, and I've got everything covered for you. Um, going into his skills now, his uh, passive is called Undisputed Champ. Each enemy killed grants a stack of uh, that boosts El Dragon's melee damage by 3%, up to a maximum of 10 stacks. Half of the stacks are lost on death, so building up those stacks could be an important role, but you'll never think about it in combat. His weapon is the MRBX Cybernetic Arms. Eldragon's primary melee combo is a flurry of blows, while his secondary is a powerful clap, activating his offhand melee while sprinting executes a drop kick. His talent is a CWF Championship Belt. The symbol of Eldragon's faded glory in the ring provides a synergistic effect with the champ's abilities, increasing his effectiveness in battle. Now on to the real things that we call skills. Clothesline. This is his dash, or this is how you initiate combat with people. El Dragon charges forward with his arms outstretched, dealing 67 damage to enemies. During En Fuego, a powerful forward leap, dealing massive damage to one enemy. First off, I don't ever suggest you do this with En Fuego. But secondly, this clothesline is amazing, and we're going to put talents into it to make it amazing. It'll snare, it will knock them up. And if you cancel it, I believe it will also do a ground pound for damage if you're like right on top of somebody. And this is going to be how you how you just get kills because you'll uh, the snare. We we definitely want the snare. When you snare them with it, that also snares their ability to, to attack and damage you, and that makes you win one on ones. I mean, just straight up, like you'll just win them. It's it's um, it's, it's pretty fantastic. It's fun. Uh, his next skill, Dragon Splash. L Dragon leaps into the air and falls back down, dealing 200 damage to nearby enemies. During Enfuego, it stuns all enemies' damage. So this is the skill you want to save for when you Enfuego. Uh, his leap itself is powerful, but I think that the uh, more damage really and truly comes from the uh, area of effect that you'll put down on the ground. So you'll put a talent into making sure that when you do Dragon Splash, it leaves a field of damage. And if they stand in that field, they'll take, take some damage. I think it does uh, 468 or something like that off the top of my head. And... Um, the way that I like to use this is that I mostly use it to clear minion waves, but I like it more for zone control so that if you're going to go this way, you're going to take damage. Or if I'm up against something like a Galileo, Galilea, I don't know how to say her name, um, she'll do her zone control area and you'll step right outside of it and then do yours. And if you've hit the level 3 and you've got your clap, which you should always be taken, then... Uh, you'll also be able to outrange her with that clap while she's in her zone and you're in your zone and you're just zoning each other for no f***ing reason. So, his ultimate, En Fuego, El Dragon explodes dealing 167 damage to nearby enemies. For 10 seconds, El Dragon's attacks and skills take on additional properties. So during En Fuego, uh, while I think it's a neat ultimate, I don't think it's very powerful. Hmm, sad face. Kind of reminds me of Reyna. But, it's very important that you use it to... Uh, Dragon Splash. So, uh, sure, you can blow in Fuego. You are pretty pretty vulnerable when you first use the ultimate because you sit there and do this animation where your arm goes into the air. And I feel like you're sitting there forever. But, you'll go ahead and uh, do your clothesline to get close, pop in Fuego, and then Dragon Splash on them. And this whole combo by itself is going to do an, a nice chunk of damage. I mean, it's not the best, but uh, you'll do a nice chunk of damage just for doing that, right? But also, they were snared and weren't doing as much damage to you. They're now stunned. And you're on them like stink on oh, shit. And you'll be able to take them out, no problem. Uh, you won't be able to survive a lot of the hits, though. So once you start taking damage, if you see your health bar drop below, I want to say 50%, you're probably going to die at that point. You need to get out. Now, El Dragon's Helix um, makes him a pretty powerful initiator. So for this first talent, I always take the stunner. Enemies hit by clothesline or slow, 30% slow for 3 seconds. Now this makes it really easy to start a fight. Because uh, with that slow, you'll already be doing more damage than they will be putting out. So that slow is pretty powerful there. 
Um, I don't think the other two are even remotely useful. Uh, the 30% damage reduction, you could argue that it could be useful, but I find that getting that 30% damage reduction doesn't matter and that you're taking too much damage anyway. Uh, El Dragon is just too weak for that to make much of a difference. For the second talent line, uh, pure face, you know, splash damage, gee, that's the one. Uh, leaving down those zones of area is pretty powerful. It also helps you annihilate minion waves, but um, if there's not a lot of minion waves, that zone can be just powerful on every map that I've played it with. There is an argument we made with momentum, and that if you do a dragon splash on a minion wave, you'll gain a 50% movement speed increase, which is amazing. And then you can use that to keep going. So if you're on a meltdown map, it's really fun to do a splash and then just run around at full speed, beating people up and then running. Like it makes his it makes it really fun, but I don't think it's as powerful. Um, Onslaught level three, deafening applause is the only one you should be look at. There is no other talent here at level three. Power Fist doesn't exist, and it's terrible. But Deafening Applause is amazing. So increasing the attack range of your uh, left trigger button, your uh, alternate attack, is, is incredibly useful. Even though it's slower and does less damage than your right trigger attack, the fact is that in most combat, you're trying to get in melee range, but it's too dangerous. This solves your problem for you. It's, it's great. Uh, level 4, the one that you need to pick here every single time is Flailing Fist. Being able to knock people up, is this is kind of like a double stun basically, because you're going to knock them up, and then you're going to cancel out your sprit or your clothesline, right? And as they come down, you'll be able to just stick on top of them. So that can be pretty powerful. Uh, for this one, this is completely up to you. I don't think the damage reduction is very useful because if you need that damage reduction, you've already lost all your stacks. Um, for the right-hand side, well to weight, the energy champion stacks boost a movement speed by 1.5%. That can help, but so can equipment, which gives you that extra movement speed. I typically run movement speed, um, especially on this guy. Actually, I think we're going to go over gear, and he's going to be a prime thing for one of my gear options. Uh, but uncanny isn't so bad either. You're skills don't do a ton of damage but when you do start building up those stacks uh, it can be pretty powerful I mean that's a 30% extra damage for doing nothing extra like you're already gonna be using your abilities to engage and do damage so they're just gonna do more damage for you so all three of these are pretty good but I, I tend to stay away from the damage reduction on to number six uh, the important one about level six is that the mutation is actually pretty powerful I think but I generally go with hang time because I want that survivability boost. I don't have the mutation here, but in the beta, I remember using that uh, unstoppable, and it gave you that 20% attack speed after using your Dragon Splash. That 20% doesn't seem like much, but when you do boost it, and they're just out of range, you'll just be clapping like crazy on them and hitting them fast. It's just so incredibly fast. It's a noticeable increase, so it's pretty powerful. I never take Neckbreaker. It's terrible. Uh, but then hang time, that shield and health regeneration is pretty nice. I mean, I've many times I've actually uh, done Dragon Splash and left down that trail of the uh, splash damage, the AoE, and then just run around a corner and my shield's fully recharged. I got the full benefits of the health thing and then came right back in with new vigor. I, it was, I liked it. I liked hang time. But keep in mind that Unstoppable can be pretty powerful too. So if you're already winning a lot of fights or if you have a good support on your hands, take Unstoppable. Alright, so now to level 7. Uh, this one is kind of a toss-up for you, but I generally like the reduced cooldown time. Um, I do like the area of effectiveness because people will just move out of your area, and so if you land right on top of them, it's that extra tick of damage that they're going to receive before they get out of it. You know, it, can, it just can really blanket a large area. But... Having the cooldown time is also useful because then you can just use it more often, especially if you took the speed talent from above and you're bouncing back and forth on a meltdown map between two lanes. So, yeah, it depends on the map, I suppose. Generally, I'd pick from the top of the rope. Decrease that cooldown time. For level 8, um, the drop kick uh, health back, that's definitely the one I like to take. The important part about the drop back health tag is to actually use your drop kick, drop back, drop kick. Uh, to do the drop kick while you're sprinting, hit left trigger. And that was the drop kick. 
So that will give you 100% of that lifesteal. It's you're already great at initiating, uh, and you're going to be using your left trigger a lot anyway, because you took the uh, clap from before, and that the enhanced clap is amazing. So I definitely suggest you just take <laughs> the life steal. However, if you have a good support, you could just as easily take attitude adjustment and get that 60% extra damage. It's not much, but if someone's healing you. We don't really need lifesteal, do we? Uh, it's also actually kind of hard to pull the lifesteal off uh, because drop kick is, I don't know, I feel like it's just weird, clunky to use. The mutation here is called Unbelievable, and it will replace your drop kick with a bicycle kick that does some damage. I don't think it does a lot of damage. I don't think that it's anything to be crazy about, but I don't ever remember picking it <laughs> in the beta. I thought it was terrible then. I think it's terrible now. I don't even have it here, but I think that the lifesteal or the amp or the damage amplification is, is far superior. So moving on to level, uh, level 9. Again, the lifesteal is a winner for me. Uh, reducing the cooldown can be useful, but once I do the engage, hmm. well at this point in the game I don't really think much of it matters. The cooldown can be useful but I'm often chasing down one person, so it's like minus 10% per hit, meh. Maybe you'll get some minions in there and, and truly reduce that cooldown down even further with that. Uh, but then the same can be said about that lifesteal, because once you need health, you can run past minions and do 100% lifesteal, which is not much, because Clothesline doesn't do a lot of damage in the first place. I mean, 67 damage, so 67 per enemy hit, uh, and a single minion wave is 5. So 67 times 5, that's 350 health or so, 340 something, 330, 40, I don't know. Um, if you add that to the enemy's hit, it's not even much at that point. You're, you just regenerate it as much as your hang time regenerates, plus more if you just hit two targets. So the lifesteal is good, but I always go with the uh, cooldown reduction just because I do want to use my abilities as often as possible. The lifesteal can be good. But I find that the cooldown reduction is top notch. Uh, finally, our last talent here. I don't think any of these are very good. Dragonfire is absolutely terrible. So don't pick that. <laughs> but uh, the Ring of Fire is okay. Once you get the mutation here, I think the mutation here is far better, but it will change the way that you use ultimate a little bit. Typically, the way I use the ultimate is that I close line in. I blow the ultimate because your ultimate will do damage when you use it. Um, and then I beat the crap out of them after stunning them. So uh, again, the, the combo that I like to use is that I clothesline into fight, I cancel the clothesline, I then use in Fuego, and then I try to dragon splash them because it will also stun them at that point too. And that all comes down to me dominating my foe at that point because they're already been I can easily catch up with them in melee and start beating them up. If they start moving around, I can start clapping and get them within range. Uh, by now, their shields are dead, are completely obliterated. And, you know, we've already got the significant advantage just because of close, our snared clothesline and the stun. So definitely up to you to pick which one you want. But please don't pick Dragonfire. That's the important part. Don't pick Dragonfire. It's terrible. So I want to do a quick section on the gear that I like to use. Uh, as you can see on the screen, I like to use a attack damage, a movement speed, and a health increase. Um, the legendary for L Dragon is a uh, it's called the Champion's Belt, and I believe it gives you a sprint speed boost. But also, it's special is that it increases the damage of your clothesline and dragon splash by twenty five percent. I think it's a shield. So if I were to replace anything on here, it would probably be the uh, vest. Uh, the Kevlar vest here, because that's just a health increase to, to give me a little bit more survivability. Um, and uh, while there's the other two pieces that I use are an attack damage and movement speed, and movement speed, movement speed. So definitely want to want to increase his movement speed for gear. I just find it to be a better selection of choices there. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind subbing out the uh, attack damage for attack speed. I think that could do well. Uh, but the attack speed thing that I have has a reduction of movement speed on it, which isn't ideal, so I, I ended up using this one instead. 
All right, as we get started, um, I'm gonna go ahead and clap for my people at some point. I'm sure we're gonna grab the snare. The snare has got to be one of my favorite talents here, just because it uh, reduces their attack speed as well, and I think that's really important. Then it make one of you wanting super easy, uh, but you know, it also gives you a really good usefulness in the way that we're gonna play uh, El Dragon here, which is to initiate fights and engage with our enemies. I'm gonna go ahead and clap for my my team here. Good job, guys. You guys are doing a good job. <laughs> All right. So to start with, uh, I'm gonna go try to rush to the right hand side. See, um, try to get there a little bit faster than people by using my my overrun speed first there. And you can see that it, it pays off because I'm way ahead of our opponent getting there and already capturing it. It's the first one that we're gonna capture. So I'm going to stay to the side here until we actually take it. So now that we've taken it, we're going to go full on onto this guy. Uh, starting out with that, that slam, which just hardly does any damage. Um, we have our, our sprint back up, but uh, I think he went stealth. There he is. Alright, so we're going to keep beating on him. Uh, oh, he's about to go down. We're going to get that kill. We're going to move on to the next one. We've got the point. We can just run for it. I think we're going to initiate him as soon as we get close enough. Yeah, there we go. Uh, looks like I didn't cancel it fast enough, but he's already snared. He cannot get away. There's no way he's getting away from us at this point. We're going to take him out. Alright, so moving on to B. We're going to go check this out. Looks like there's some combat going on over here. Let's see. We can't initiate, so all we can do is ground pound. I missed the person, but Reyna is up here at the point. We're going to go ahead and take her down. She is a backpedaler and will be easy to take out. As you can see, backpedaling is never a good idea. That was a cool crit that I pulled off on her. Uh, go ahead and pick the zone control. <laughs> Moving right along. So we went ahead and grabbed the zone control one, which puts a dot on the ground. And then the next one was something I forgot what it is because I'm trying to do this on the fly. Uh, so right at this point, I'm trying to stay on the point and take the point while they've already left. Uh, the clap, the super clap, which is like one of the best sounds. It gives you a little bit of range. Wow, I took a lot of damage for staying at this point. It's time for me to go out. We put down the zone control. If they chase, they've already taken quite a bit of damage from that. So we're going to regenerate our shields. Ooh, I took some damage. Oh, no, he's on me. Okay, so we're going to sit here. Oh, I can't believe he missed me with that hook. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just going to keep punishing him for being in melee range. He's very dangerous to me. It's a two-on-one say Oh, and I got the kill, but was taken out. It was a 2v1 scenario. Looks like Rocket Hawk decided to join us near the end there. Uh, too bad he wasn't there when I first got to that point. So again, the talent I chose during that little heated section was the uh, dot on Dragon Splash. And the super clap, which allows me to have a little bit of range on my left hand trigger ability to clap. So right now I'm headed to A. We're going to go check out A to make sure that we can still take this point because I don't like them taking our point. Looks like we've already got control of it. Rocket Hawk is running away before he got the point, so we're just going to take it and be sure that we get this point. Collector we're going to go straight to B. I believe that they're attacking B right now. I can see it right now. Let's we'll see if we can get a nice uh, engage on them or initiate. So the battle's already started. We just need to start punishing them for being here and kind of body block their exit. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's get some more damage on him. We didn't get that kill, but that's okay. He was being severely punished for, for poor, poor positioning. Looks like we got a uh, Whiskey Foxtrot, is that? Uh, in the top left there. Yeah, there he is. So we're going to initiate on him. We didn't get the slam yet. That's okay. We're going to keep punishing him while he's not paying attention to us because he's a fool for not looking at us and dealing with us. And we'll get that kill and steal his little minion kill too, which will push us into the next level. Two levels, we missed it. So for this line, I like to take the flame of the fist and knock him up on the uh, initiation. We're going to take Uncanny this time because we're dominating so badly that that additional damage is probably going to pay off. Um... Uh, it looks like C had already been taken. We're going to move on on our way to B and double check that B is okay. It looks like a hook just came out. We're going to go ahead and engage on him. Oh, we missed him with the slam. So that's okay. We're going to stay on B. I'm sure he's going to come back here. Nope, nope. They're both of them are right here. Let's go ahead and deep engage. Hard initiate this fight. Let's start all the damage right here. He's going to try to trap me. We're going to jump right over it. Not, not even be a problem. He's going to hook me. It doesn't matter because we are winning this one. No problem. Uh, Thorns did quite a bit of damage. There's Milke to the right. Milke? Milke? I can't remember her name. So she's just going to go around the corner. We're going to try to... Oh, well, I thought Thorns was going to go the other way. So she juked both of us. We're going to hard initiate on her. 
Just gonna severely punish her for being out of position now, and we're gonna take that. Or we won't get the kill, but we'll get the assist on that one. So it looks like was some what's going on? okay. Man, maybe they ran. I thought it was being taken by our opponents, but it looks like we were taking it. Now it's mistaken. So we're gonna get to B right now. It looks like we're already taking it. Go ahead and purchase my boots. Hard initiate on this guy. This guy is almost doomed. He's, there's no way he's getting away. I got the assist on him already. So here comes uh uh cool, I forgot his name. We're gonna punish him. He's sorely out of position. We'll get that kill with the incredible he's got some uh, Oscar Mike see the range on the super cloud that's why we like it I'd like to uh, initiate on him right now but I think it's okay here's a good spot yeah yeah there we go I missed the slam but that's okay we've got the snare on Milke oh, I, I completely missed with that I thought she was gonna come down to the left hand side uh, we're gonna go ahead and blow our ultimate and clap this guy you can see that it's burning him quite fast he's taking a significant amount of damage but he still gets the kill. So our support wasn't really doing much support on us, but that's okay. I didn't realize that our Miko wasn't really healing people, or at least me, as much as I truly needed in that scenario. But that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and readdress our competition here, from which we are winning a ridiculous amount already. I mean, we're so far ahead, I don't think that there's much that they can do to stop us. Uh, well, let's hope that they go ahead and surrender, but they didn't surrender, so here's another point. I see you over there. I know that you're there, but I don't really care. I want to cut you off. Oh, did he get around me? No, 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 he went in. So let's go ahead and and initiate on him, knocking him into the air, and really just securing that kill. That's the initiation that I keep talking about. It's that clothesline into a slam. It really messes people up and just secures a solid kill. So she's got the poisons. I definitely feel the poisons. We're not going to let her get away there. We're going to stick to her. We're going to keep this clap. She's not getting away. I'm going to get that kill with the initiation. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. There's Whiskey Foxtrot. We're going to go ahead and drag and splash the ground right there. He's going to move right out of it. Of course he is. He's got a snare on me. He's got the upper hand a little bit in damage, but we're going to close that gap real fast here. Go ahead and start beating up on Mike. Mike check. We don't really like him. See if we can't get some crits for the headshots. There's one crit. There we go. So we've taken out three of their enemies. We've got we're missing one point. Welcome back. Senior shotgun. See if we can't get that. And we did, and it kills. See that's what the initi that initiation is that it's just a, a clothesline into a stun. So first they get knocked up and then they get knocked up again. That's a really powerful way to control your opponents. I wish that I had another one just for Muffy because that's such a powerful combination. So she's going to run. Looks like uh, our teammates are having trouble getting her. And she's doing an excellent job at evading. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? There she is. And we're going to get that kill by just simply clapping. Her teammates were on their way but unable to truly assist. We're going to go ahead and initiate for a double knockup on this guy again. He's He's done. He's done. I'm surprised they haven't to sell. There it is. <laughs> I knew they were going to. Thank you guys for watching my video. I have a lot of fun making these videos for you guys. And I want to keep doing content like this because I just got such an adrenaline and endorphin rush in my brain every time I see you guys watch my videos. Uh, so if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button at the bottom. Um, if you want to see more future content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe on the other side. And thanks, uh, thanks a million for watching. Uh, to give out a real shout out to all my subscribers, I wanted to thank you guys personally. I know that I can't physically talk to you, but I want to talk to you so much and I want to say thank you so much. So, sorry for this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.